Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about three layer hierarchical network model and two tier and three tier design will be the part of this discussion. So we use this layered hierarchical model to help us in designing a reliable as well as a scalable network. So for example, if you are in a lab environment and we want to connect two computers to create a computer network, then we can have network interface card in both of the computers and we can connect them and we can create a computer network. But as the number of users in the lab increase, we prefer to purchase a switch, for example, and then we connect all the computers with that switch. And in this way, this switch actually gives access to all the nodes. So these nodes actually can access the network by using this switch. In the same way, we can have, for example, second lab and in the second lab as well, the switch can be used to provide access to the network needed by these computers or by these end nodes. So these end nodes can be actually IP phone or the printer or any computer or laptop. So these switches are providing access and we call these devices to work on the access layer and the responsibilities of access layer is that this is the layer where end nodes are connected to the network sorry so end nodes are connected with the network this is the first one and then we can also define some access control policies maybe collision domains and port security at this access layer and these access layer uh, switches actually do not forward frames to other access layer switches and now if you want to connect these computers or these labs, which are basically in two different labs in lab one and lab two, then for instance, we can purchase a new switch and then these access layer, layer switches can be connected with that switch. And for redundancy, maybe we can purchase another switch and we can connect both of the access layer switch with this second distribution layer switch. So it means in this case, if any of the if any of the switch on the distribution layer fails, then still the network will be working because we have provided the redundancy by using this redundancy means a duplicate copy of that has been implemented uh, there. Now this is these are the switches we call these switches which are providing an aggregation point for the access layer switch we call these switches to work on the distribution layer and for some reason we also call it collapsed core collapsed cores means because we don't have the third layer which we are discussing in a moment so specifically this is actually distribution layer and as far as uh, function of this distribution layers are concerned so you can see this distribution layer actually provides the uh, aggregation point to access layer switches so access layer switches are being connected by these distribution layer switches and they this distribution layer switches actually forward traffic between LAN switches and this is uh, this switch is uh, this layer is not directly connected with the end devices you can see they are not directly connected but these distribution layer switches are connected with the end devices using access layer switches and uh, so these are the basic functions of uh, the devices on the distribution layer. So we can have uh, routers or switches to perform these jobs at the distribution layer. And then, for example, this was the case of one building. Maybe we have these two in one building. In the same way, we can have second building. We can also have third building. And now if we count to connect these three buildings, then a very simple solution is that we can connect maybe these switches with each other for example the first switch now this switch is connected with the first switch in the second building and then this switch is uh, connected with the second switch in the second building and then switch is also connected with the uh, switch in the third building so you can see here and the same way this is connected with the second switch so in this way we will be connecting all the switches with the every uh, other switch in the whole network so this is one of the possibility and uh, second possibility is that we can purchase a third device like this one you can see here and now this device can be used to connect all these 
switch. So now this will be the central point and this will be the aggregation point for the distribution layer devices. And for redundancy, we can purchase a second switch. And now these devices, so that can be actually router as well and the switches, these devices are known to be work on the core layer and as far as jobs of this core layer is concerned, so the core layer provides aggregation point to distribution layer switches, one point, and this core layer switches need to be fast, fast because they have to process uh, the data or the traffic coming from all these end devices. You see, all these end devices are uh, at some point connected with the core layer, so this needs to be fast enough and this is also known as the backbone of the internet work because after this point maybe we are connected with the rest of the world and maybe we are connected with the internet so this is known as the backbone of the internet uh, internet work as well now uh, what are the benefits of that and sometimes what happens this collapse course so again uh, distribution layer collapsed co we don't use this layer all the things are implemented using these two layers. So we call that this core layer has been collapsed here and we just call this collapsed core. So this is the reason that this, this layer is not there. Then this becomes collapsed core. Anyway, after this brief introduction, let's discuss some of the benefits. So one of the benefit of this uh, design, this hierarchical design, so uh, is that this system becomes scalable. And yes, I, I forgot to mention that these two layers are known as two tier. And if we have three layers, then we call this three tier design, three tier. And if you have these and two tier, so this is really clear from this uh, discussion. So system becomes scalable means if some other, if you want to add some more users or some more switches in the network, then this becomes easier for us uh, if uh, by using this uh, if we have this hierarchical design in our network so system becomes scalable this becomes easy for expansion and then second benefit is that system provides redundancy redundancy means some duplicate components are there in the network to provide the availability for example if some of the switch fails in this network then there are some other switches which will be there to provide to make the system available all of the time and uh, in the same way for example here we can see that access layer switches are connected with uh, two distribution layer switches and uh, the distribution layer is connected with multi maybe two uh, core layer switches or core layer devices and then this also provides us uh, security. So uh, we have actually this layered architecture and we can use these different layers to implement security at different levels. So we can implement port security as well as protocol security uh, at different layers. Uh, so these are the benefits and one more benefits that, that this hierarchical design actually provides us uh, uh, to better manage or maintain the network. So for example, in this case, if you want to remove some of the switch or some uh, device, then we have the redundant network and so because of this redundancy maybe we can maybe remove some of the switch or some of the device from there and we can easily replace it or if there is some maintenance issue then we have the clear sketch of the network with us and we can figure out easily that where the problem is so these are the benefits of this uh, hierarchical design so two tier as well as three tier design and I hope this discussion was a bit helpful for you and uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time and I hope to see you in some other video. Thank you.